Hey everyone, Christian here, and <clears throat> uh, I hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving in the United States and those who watch abroad. Uh, I hope you guys had a good week, and guys and gals. And <clears throat> I want to talk about a subject that I uh, wanted to make a vlog on about a month ago, and I kept on putting it off because it really wasn't uh, time. Really wasn't of the essence for it. I didn't have to uh, do it a certain time. So let me talk about it, and I'll get to it real uh, not quickly, but instead of talking about it for five minutes without you guys knowing what it is, I want to talk about why Hurricane Irma might have been the deadliest disaster for the state of Florida. Now, that might sound crazy because those of you who have lived in Florida for a while know that there have been uh, worse hurricanes that have done more destructive damage. Um, Hurricane Andrew 92, Hurricane uh, Wilma and Katrina probably did more I wouldn't say... I w Wilma and Katrina didn't do... Uh, more damage. They just they did uh, destroy. They did more severe damage. Uh, Hurricane Charlie for sure in Punta Gorda, uh, throughout all the way up through basically Orlando. A lot of those areas in the middle of nowhere <clears throat> didn't um, didn't get a whole lot of TV coverage because it, once you head northeast of uh, Punta Gorda all the way to Orlando, there aren't that any really any big towns there in the middle of the state. Um, but Hurricane Andrew obviously was a, a devastating hurricane. And I think that anyone who had experienced Hurricane Andrew decided to go ahead and leave because Hurricane Irma was supposed to be a Category 4 to Category 5 hurricane making landfall in Florida. Um, first in the Miami area, which is going to be absolutely devastating. Uh, you know, it's been 25 years and the population of that area had increased significantly. Um, then it was going to come around the corner, and that's why I left. Um, if I was going to be on the western side, I would have, uh, I would have wrote it out. But it, when it was coming directly at me, uh, I'm I went through Hurricane Charlie. I know what that's like. Uh, I have friends that went through Hurricane Andrew. I've seen the pictures. It's something you don't ever want to experience. It's not fun at all. Uh, it's you you see it on the news. You saw what Puerto, what happened to Puerto Rico, and that's exactly what, exactly what would happen to Florida. Uh, had Hurricane uh, Irma been a Category 5, even a, a strong Category 4, uh, fours and fives are, are devastating hurricanes. I mean, they're catastrophic, devastating to catastrophic. And I would say what happened in Puerto Rico is catastrophic. And I'm glad that it's finally, Puerto Rico is finally coming back online, so to speak, uh, from what I can tell from news reports. So that's good to hear. Uh, for those of anyone watching in Puerto Rico, I'm you know, hopefully maybe you can watch it, you know, we have the internet and have, you know, normal life again, and I, uh, I feel bad that you, you know, you had to suffer through basically two months of this, and, uh, <clears throat> so, why was it so bad for Florida? Well, we didn't, my mother didn't even lose power, um, I lost power for five or six days, but I was about 30 miles from the center, uh, and about 40 miles from landfall, so that makes more sense. My sister, where I am right now, uh, and the, where the where the RV is parked, she lost power for two days. In fact, it was wasn't. If you lose power for less than uh, forty eight hours, I think it was like forty hours. Your freezer is considered okay, or the food at least is. You should probably cook it. But uh, for the most part, a lot of people suffered a lot of um, minor structural damage, like very minor, like uh, maybe some uh, some shingles, maybe some vinyl siding came off. Um, you know, a lot of superficial things. But there wasn't any severe damage. There were some trees down that crushed a few cars. There was flooding in the Naples Bonita, Bonita Springs area. That was relatively uh, harsh to the people there. Um, but living there, you should know that you will get flooding, and you can get flooding even when there is no hurricane. Uh, so <clears throat> the reason I say that Hurricane Irma was so devastating was it made so many people... Uh, and right, rightly, rightly so, leave the state. You know, I left the state at the last minute, um, and I actually had plans to leave beforehand to go to uh, Eufaula, Alabama, to ride it out, which would have been not that good. It would have still been a Category 1 hurricane there, or a tropical storm. Um, but I, I, I actually, got, I actually uh, canceled the plans, and then I had to make plans again at the last minute. So when I talk about it being devastating... I mean that in devastating in the in the fact that it, it made everyone in Florida feel safe. Those that wrote it out, those that watched it on TV, you know, you saw trees go down there here and there. You saw some, you know, some limbs go down. 
he saw some flooding, but he didn't see people losing their entire life. Uh, you know, meaning, yeah, no one, uh, there's very few deaths, and the few that, that did happen were uh, either the elderly from, you know, the inability to, uh, from, to be mobile, or people who were driving out in the middle of the hurricane, which is just stupid. Uh, I hope anyone would know that you, you don't drive in a hurricane. The emergency responders won't drive when it gets over 50 miles an hour. And to do that, it's just, they were probably just trying to be funny, and it, uh, it wasn't so funny in the end. So, uh, <clears throat> seeing it on the TV, experiencing it in person, people will think, well, I can ride this out. I can ride out a Category 5, or even a Category 4. And um, you can't do that safely. Uh, people, I think that a lot of people have a false sense of security. That's the problem, is the false sense of security that now exists in Florida, thinking, okay, I went through Irma, I can go through anything. I could take on Hurricane Andrew. Um, and there, the population in Florida between 1992 and 2017, I, I don't have exact figures, but in the, off the top of my head, I want to say it has increased by 7 million people. And a lot of this is, you know, new construction uh, in areas that are low-lying. A lot of the nicer, higher land in Florida has already been built on, especially in South Florida. The higher areas in South Florida are going to be, there's a ridge in Miami, uh, there's a, it goes through Fort Lauderdale, and Sarasota, and parts of uh, Fort Myers are a little bit higher up on the ground. But when you get south of uh, Tampa, there really isn't very much. There's a Lake Wales Ridge, and if we had gotten the storm surge that was expected... Uh, the house that I normally stay in would have just been completely underwater, uh, and so would have been half of the city of Cape Coral. And, uh, you know, houses would have been structurally damaged or been missing, you know, roofs would be blow up, blown off. My friend Ken that you've seen in the vlogs, he went through, he took a direct hit on Hurricane Andrew, and he described it as a, a freight train literally coming through your front door. It blew out his windows. Open, blew his roof completely off the house. It just doesn't even know where it went. And uh, for a month, he was basically a refugee driving around trying to find work. I mean, he was you know a younger guy then and didn't have you know three months savings to take care of his family. So he went up to Alabama and uh, to, to to you know to basically get away from the, the mess. And imagine Miami, a city, a county, Dade County, has three point. 1 million people in it. I'm just ca counting figures. I could be off by up to like 10% or so, but you know, a f two to, th you know, there's at least two and a half and there's probably closer to four because the, there's a lot of undocumented workers there. And to have that many people without power, or, you know, not all of them, but all of them without power, m most without shelter, um, or many without shelter, I should say, to have that sort of situation um, that's a, you know that there's more people in Dade County or there as there are as many people in Dade County as there are in the entire state of Puerto Rico, or I'm sorry, territory of Puerto Rico, and to have that kind of a city that uh, blown to pieces uh, <clears throat> would just be, I would never want to experience that. I would imagine there would be uh, martial law, there would be other things that would be very unpleasant, and in areas that are uh, lower lying. The West Coast is naturally a little bit lower lying. That's why it wasn't settled as much as, say, the East Coast. But now you have 20 million Floridians that, I, they don't all think this, but you have 20 million people that live in Florida, many of whom stayed, many of whom watched the TV, and now they think that it's, many will still think that it's, or will think that it's now okay to ride out a Category 4 or Category 5 hurricane without much damage. And there's a lot of misinformation talking to people around, just around town, not plant people. Plant people in general know what kind of devastation can happen because when you have a, a plant garden, you're going to have more uh, down trees, you have more plants. So you're going to have more down palms, more down uh, canopy. So uh, I am concerned about the next hurricane that comes. And the one that will come, and there will be another Category 5, whether it's in... Uh, one year or 15 years and when that time comes people are going to remember Hurricane Irma as being uh, financially a big deal but as far as uh, life altering not that big of a deal and as a result uh, 
you're going to find people that just are not going to be well prepared. It's going to kind of, it's going to be sort of like Hurricane Andrew, where people didn't understand just how bad it was until news crews got down there into Homestead, the South area. If you look at Miami, it's a gridded area, but uh, you have basically the city of Miami goes down to 72nd Street south, Southwest, but below 152nd, no one really went down there, but it was absolutely flattened. You know, you, you got your mobile homes, you have just any, all homes are just basically gone. Um, and that will happen. I mean, there, if you want, if you want to try and find out if your house will withstand 160 mile an hour winds, uh, I mean, I wouldn't want to, I'll, I'll go ahead and come back and find out if that happened. I don't want to find out for myself because if you're going to hide from the wind and your shelter gets blown away, imagine what, it, if you, if you guys have seen any of these, uh, pictures of two by fours driven into Royal Palm trunks like completely through them like they were bullets and that can happen you know those can go flying you get hit by one of those uh that is not going to end well i have seen a four or five thousand pound bentley crash into a royal palm and the palm had some scuffs on it was okay the bentley was was total i actually have a picture of it i wish i knew how to like put the picture in while like i was talking here but it's but if a two by four can drive itself through a royal palm trunk, um, then you know how strong those those winds are. Uh, not to mention also storm surge, especially if one were to come like underneath Florida and come around the peninsula like Charlie did, just bigger and stronger. And so my concern is that that will happen and have a sort of an unprecedented storm because Irma would have been an unprecedented storm had it kept its strength. Uh, fortunately for us. It, it kind of not it kind of bumped into Cuba and the area east of Havana there's an area called Matanzas um, it basically got uh, pretty brutalized but it, it knocked out a lot of the I mean uh, hurricane Irma I think came ashore as 120 125 miles an hour category three which is formidable but it's not um, going to I mean the difference between 120 and 160 miles an hour is actually pretty big because a lot of houses are built to withstand 120, 125, but over 150 is, you know, kind of uncharted territory. Uh, you know, they say that it we will withstand 150, 160, but will it withstand, uh, you know, a piece like a piece of a palm trunk that's been shattered, uh, you know, impacting your window uh, at that speed? I mean, I, I doubt it. I doubt that there's really anything that could stop that. I mean, if you have shutters, probably it'll probably dent the shutters and break the window, and then you're still out of luck because you're getting wind inside your house now. Um, but it, it's made uh, this false sense of security, and people just are going to generally. People tend to forget uh, things that have happened in the not too distant past if they weren't that memorable. Now, I don't think people in Puerto Rico are going to forget Hurricane Marina because Maria, Marina, Maria is what I meant to say, because it was a. I mean, it basically just tore the place apart and set it back, you know, 30 years for for months at a time. And there's probably parts that will never be the same. San Juan's a very old city. It's one of the oldest cities in the new world. And uh, to see it like that is just, you know, a terrible thing. And uh, Miami hasn't been around that long. Miami was incorporated in 1896. There was 500 people then. Uh, had it been incorporated in 1900, it would have been the largest city, I believe, in the United States that would have been incorporated in the 20th century. At the end of the 20th century, that ended up going to Las Vegas because it was incorporated in 1911, I think, somewhere around there, 1912. I did, I did a paper on Las Vegas, the history thereof. Um, but to have that false sense is is so dangerous because you need to know about the history of hurricanes. You need to know Hurricane Katrina. Anyone that went through Hurricane Katrina can tell you. I mean, I have when I was in Louisiana, I met you know my friends there, and her, Hurricane Katrina sh showed a lot of people just how the lack of uh, the presence of authority um, can have effect on people in a first world country. Uh, New Orleans was without any real authority going on for weeks at a, a couple weeks at a time. You know, I, I I don't know exactly. I can't remember exactly how long it was. I remember at least two weeks later seeing you know looting going on. The flood water is still there. Uh, basically, it was extremely dangerous to enter the city. A lot of the police had either abandoned the city or just kind of given up. Um, 
and that would be extremely that that is why I left that is why I left Florida that's why the next time it happens I'll leave Florida again um, if I have you know I, I think my friend Ken gave me a lot of insight as to just what he had to experience in Miami and living in a large city like that uh, it can be very dangerous you know you have people that will band up in gangs and um, you know I don't want to get into the, the politics of that and that's not the purpose of this channel the purpose of this channel is to talk about palms um, I can tell you that uh, what I did experience on a positive side was you get a lot of uh, sorry I just hit the table here I'm still knocking a little bit let's okay so you see a lot of palms that uh, did just fine and uh, took 100 and 120 mile an hour winds down where they landfell in Naples. Uh, Satakentia, Dictiosperma, the hurricane palm, um, Royals, obviously, uh, Palmettos, and then you can see some palms that don't do so well. Uh, fishtails aren't really great in a hurricane. Washingtonias aren't that great. And I know someone asked about the Washingtonia doing a, a vlog. I will get that done. Uh, tomorrow I'm heading down to uh, Miami. I'll be there for three days. I will uh, get some... Um, not, that, not that that's where I need to go for Washingtonians, because I could literally, like, accidentally walk into one, you know, down the street if I just walked 100 yards. Because uh, they're everywhere in Florida. They're all the way from Key West all the way to Jacksonville and Pensacola. So, uh, you know, I have a certain feeling about Washingtonians, but that's not what this uh, vlog is about. It's about the dangers that exist with, with hurricanes. Um... Flood waters are, are no joke, wind is no joke, and just because it didn't happen this time doesn't mean it's, it's not going to happen next time. Um, ask anyone that's been through Hurricane Andrew. Talk to people. If you live in Florida and you haven't ridden through a major hurricane, talk to someone. Uh, you know, the best information I get is from people who have lived here since they were, you know, they were born here, you know, back in the 40s and 50s, and they'll tell you about all the hurricanes and all, you know, losing power for weeks on end. I mean, it gets pretty miserable after a while, uh, especially in the middle of the summer in Florida. So, uh, I was originally going to be a history major in college, and the most important thing that you can, the most important, I guess the most important thing about history is that learning it and understanding it and taking it in is part of uh, the learning process, because if you don't do that, then people are, you know, you, there's a saying that it, those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Well. That goes for the that goes for hurricanes as well. If you don't learn from the fact that a Category Five hurricane is a Category Five hurricane, whether it uh, whether it comes now or it comes you know ten years from now, um, so I I hope I was able to get across my feeling about how Hurricane Irma was such a dangerous um, you know a, a dangerous hurricane, not because of what it did, but what it will do in the future. And the mindset, what is set in the mind of uh, your average Floridian, or not your average, but many of them that may be a little bit hesitant to uh, to, to leave next time. Um, you know, it can be costly. It, you know, I know it costs me about a thousand dollars to you know to the hotels and the you know the uh, traveling with the gas and you know food and I mean food is you're going to eat food anyway, but the engine you know it, it basically cost me a thousand dollars, which can be a lot of money to people and it's not it's not not it's not like it's not a lot of money to me it's just that um some people just don't want to spend that kind of money and they'll ride it out take their chances and uh i just as dangerous as it can be driving on the highway to to leave it can it's much more dangerous to leave to stay and uh it's it's your life you, you know you, you'll watch the i remember rick scott saying um you know, you can replace your items, you can't replace your life, and that's another thing, another saying about, you know, leaving things behind in a, in a natural disaster. Um, you know, you, you don't, you want to stay with your dogs. Obviously, bring your animals. I'm not saying that not bring your animals, but uh, you can leave material things. You, your your car can be replaced. Your, uh, your leather couch can be replaced, you know, or you're not going to be able to save it anyway. Um, but you know, your life can't be replaced. So I'm going to leave that there. Hope you understand the the gravity of Hurricane Irma. It actually, I, I think more lives would be saved in the future had Hurricane Irma actually been a little more structurally devastating. I'm not advocating that that should have happened. I'm just saying because of this happening, that's probably going to happen in the future, is my uh, prediction. So 
you may agree, you may not. Uh, anyway, I'll leave it here. I'm on 20 minutes now. So uh, I hope this was an enjoyable video. I'm not too boring for you. Uh, if you have any questens about what hurricanes or you, you have an experience or like, leave them down below. Uh, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe and you'll see more palm reviews. I'm going to try and go out and do one right now in the dark. And uh, yeah, if you enjoy it, uh, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, yeah, hit the thumbs up button if, uh, if I didn't already say that. So until then, I'll see you guys later. Bye.